Shalom brothers and sisters who have arrived here on this channel. The video that I'm about to make for you guys is simply amazing. It lasted over 1 hour and 40 minutes in the Portuguese one. And I'm hoping that this will last at least an hour long here. Because I'm speeding up some things that I have to say here in order to be more efficient. I also have to apologize for you guys for making this live stream so late at night but I simply could not postpone this information any longer. I know I was supposed to make this live stream on Rumble because in there we don't have so much censorship here in this channel in rumble.com slash Ricardo Garcia. I was supposed to make this live stream here because of censorship from YouTube, however, uh, it's so much work to record once and then edit the video and then prepare again the video for the same thing. Basically, it's like a full-time job here, so it's very difficult and I prefer to do this way uh, already on YouTube. So I'm hoping that some terms that I cannot use fully on YouTube, you will understand if I do it like coded message for you guys in some terms here in order for YouTube not to block my channel or my video here for you guys. So what I have to talk about here today is about the seals of the revelation marked in the skies. So the seals of revelation marked in the skies is something that is literally happening as we speak right now. So on the previous video on YouTube, you saw that the Moedings, the times, the feasts of God uh, was being marked in the skies by the sun, moon and stars. And now in this video, you will see the seals of the revelation happening in the skies and its effect on earth also happening as well. What does this mean? Does this mean that the seals have already been opened or is about to be opened? I'm not sure. Uh, I used to believe that the seals are after the rapture. I actually still believe in that. However, I cannot deny the information that I'm going to provide you guys here. And perhaps this is happening in the sky and on earth as a, a foreshadow of what will happen worse in the tribulation. Or perhaps this is actually the beginning of the seals that we cannot... Uh, previously understand as we can right now. So, this information is so strong, I will go straight through to the clock in the skies here to show the hour in which we are right now. So, this is the clock in the skies as I have been showing you guys for a few videos right now. And the hour we are right now is this one. So the sun is about to go to the seventh constellation and the moon is about uh, halfway through to it become a new moon. So it's about the 21st, 22nd day of the month of the Virgo, of the sixth month, when the sun is about to reach the seventh constellation and the moon is also approaching the sun in order to, so it becomes a new moon and it begins a new the next month, which is the seventh month, the Tishrei month, the next Shemitah cycle as well. The next uh, seven year cycles begins here on this next new moon. So this is the hour in which we are right now. And this is a very important hour for us because we are approaching the fall feasts as we understand them as fall. But actually falling on a summer, a full for summer here in Israel, as I, I spoke on the last video. And this is a moment for the last moment, possible moment in the year for a, re, uh, a harvest of wheat, a harvest of barley, a harvest of the church, which happens uh, all the way until the end of the summer in Israel, which will be by the end of this October and starting November. It will change to winter, rainy winter in which you don't harvest anymore. So this is the last possible moment in this year 2022 for the harvest of the church, for the harvest of the wheat. If it has to follow this pattern here, 
then that's the moment when we can expect the rapture, the harvest, to happen right now. Now, before I go explain what's happening in the sky, first, I need for you to read the Bible with me on Revelation 4. So we have here the Revelation 4, the book of Revelation, and then we have here this passage in Revelation 4, the throne in heaven. I believe, and many of us watchmen also believe, that this is the moment where the rapture happens, Revelation 4, because it says, after this, after the churches, I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, so a door opening in heaven, and the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet, so a trumpet call, said, come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. So a voice like trumpet in an open door, uh, telling John here, uh, symbolizing the church, to come up here. So basically this is a, like a, a rapture scenario here for us. That's why, uh, where I believe the rapture will happen. Also because he was in spirit, and he was the, uh, before the throne in heaven, with Jesus sitting on it. And then he saw the 24 elders, and also he saw here, uh, in the front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. So, in Revelation 1, we see Jesus telling that the seven spirits are with the ch seven churches, and they are the seven lamps, which are now blazing before the throne of God. So the church must be already lit before the throne of God after John sees this. So the rapture is before the seals as we understand uh, right now. But let's keep on going. Uh, in the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes in front, in the front and in the back. So these are angels but major angels like archangels which were in the center around the throne of God the first living creature was like a lion the second was like an ox the third had a face like a man and the fourth like a flying eagle so we have here the lion the ox the man and the eagle four living creatures and those living creatures uh, around the throne of God also appears in Ezekiel. So let's go to Ezekiel 1. We see his vision here. And he sees this. And in the fire was that what I looked like four living creatures. So he saw also the four living creatures. In appearance their form was human. So they had, had a human-like body. But each of them had four faces and four wings. So here, four faces. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a human being, and on the right side each had the face of a lion, and on the left the face of an ox, and and each also had the face of an eagle. So again, the lion, the eagle, the man, and the, fo the ox. So the same four faces here we saw when John sees in Revelation 4. And then on, Revelation, on Ezekiel 10, he basically says that these are archangels, that those are uh, cherubims, cherubims, so archangels. The sound of the wings of the cherubim could be heard as far as the outer court, like the voice of the God Almighty when he speaks. So remember, the rapture will happen with the voice of an archangel, just like the voice of the God Almighty. That's when the rapture will happen. And we see here and we read on the verse 14, each of the cherubim had four faces. One was like a, of a cherub, the second was the face of a human, the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of eagle. He missed the ox here, but I believe ox is this one here, he said. So the same four living creatures in Revelation and in Ezekiel here, showing us these living creatures, these archangels, around the throne of God. Now that you see these in Revelation and in the throne of God, I will show you what it's like on the sky clock. So basically we see that one had the face of a human, the other the face of a lion, the other the face of ox, and the other the face of a flying eagle. So human, Aquarius, the lion, Leo, 
Taurus the Ox and Scorpio would be the Eagle. Why would Scorpio be the Eagle? Well, in ancient zodiac, in ancient uh, astronomy uh, sites, they used to call Scorpio as the Eagle. So you can see here uh, an archangel or their face of the cherubim, as they saw in Ezekiel. And you have here the Leo, Aquarius the man, Taurus the ox, and Scorpio used to be the Eagle. So that's why we use Scorpio today, but it used to be the Eagle. The ancient form here of uh, Scorpio nowadays. That's why Scorpio is considered to be the Eagle. As you can see here, this is a representation of the throne of God because God would be in the center around what we call the star Polaris, which is right in the, in the middle, in the center of the Earth. And then we have these four corners of the earth here, which is around the throne of God. And they are the, the constellations which they are in are precisely that in which the animals, the, the living creatures that John and Ezekiel saw. One has the face of a man, Aquarius. The other the face of a lion, Leo. The other the face of the ox, the Taurus. And the last one, the face of an eagle, which used to be... Uh, which is now Scorpio, but it used to be the eagle. So, as you can see here on this earth, you can see that the constellations basically shows uh, for us either a symbolism or actual, an, an actual idea of how it is up, upstairs in the heavens above us. So, this is something already amazing for you to understand this biblical astronomy as we are seeing right now. And now that you understand this, we are going to look at the signs that appears on basically these constellations here that points for the seals of the Revelation to be opened or somewhat opened here around the times in which we are right now. So going here back to, to the Bible... Let's read now Revelation 6, which is which is which are the seals being opened by the Lamb. So here, let's read with me here, Revelation 6. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown. And he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. So as soon as the lamp opened the seals, one of the living creatures releases the rider, which are the four uh, horsemen, which come on earth to bring destruction, to come on earth to bring judgment, to come on earth to bring uh, literally the book of Revelation to be revealed let's put it that way so after the lamp opens the seal one of the four living creatures doesn't say which one releases the first rider which is here the white horse or a symbol of the antichrist the symbol of the the man or the spirit which will deceive the nations and they will conquer the nations here because he cast a bow he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror to conquest people nations and tongues so let's stop here and look at what this uh, what this might look like in the sky and you will see that this actually is very very interesting here so knowing this position of this constellation in the sky here, the four corners of the earth, the four living creatures here. We're first going to look at the lion. The lion here, which I believe it is the first animal releasing the first uh, rider, the first horseman to ride on earth, which is the Antichrist. Why? Because the voice like thunder, I believe it's most likely the voice of a lion as well. So let's let's go that way. So the first 
sign we have to look at is the, the sign of the lion which for us on the 22nd of August 2019 uh, happened a major conjunction on the, const on the constellation of the lion but basically on the star of Regulus Regulus is the brightest star in the constellation of the Leo so let's go to Stellarium so you guys can see with me what I'm talking about so let's see here there we go we have the constellation here of Leo on Stellarium the date here is the 9th of August 2019 and as you can see here the planets are approaching Leo and they will converge here on the star of Regulus the brightest star on this constellation so as we go further here a few days all the way until here the 21st and 22nd let's put it 21st or 22nd here we see a major conjunction here with Mars Venus and the Sun on Regulus the, the brightest star on Leo this points for us that the first living creature the one that has the face of a lion is about to release the first horseman the first horseman which is the white horse or the Antichrist and how can we see that this is real well let's look at what happens on the next constellation which is supposed to be the constellation for the Antichrist for the beast that is released on earth so going back here we see that this constellation is supposed to open here or release the first horseman which is portrayed as the constellation of the Sagittarius which is a hybrid beast a half man half horse that has a bow has an arrow here and he symbolizes the first horseman and precisely right after the constellation here the conjunction on Regulus on the 26th of December 2019 something major also happened in this constellation which is a ring of fire solar eclipse now let's look together here so you guys can see what happened right after this constellation this conjunction here in August so after this conjunction in August we go here to December now we look the Sun pointing here Sagittarius the hybrid beast from the earth and on the 26th day we just go back a few hours here on the 26th day of December something major happens here right in the bow of the first beast here the first uh, horseman which is a ring of fire solar total solar eclipse so this uh, sign here happening in the sky right in the bowl of this horseman is clearly pointing that this horseman this rider was released on earth because this solar eclipse looks like a crown has a conjunction here with Jupiter the king planet let's put it, let's put it that way so the king planet with this crown here of a solar eclipse on the bowl of this archer and we have here this crown corona australis which is a crown here that is right under this constellation of Sagittarius so major signs happening here in this constellation right after the conjunction of Leo in the sky here in August 2019 now if you remember what happened on earth on December 2019 basically I shouldn't just give the Wikipedia page here for you guys to remember but I, I will try to do this because it's something major that happened here precisely when so precisely on 
wait here, precisely on December 2019, that's when the, act, the, the Chinese problem happened in the world. So precisely on December 2019, right when it was happening here, a major sign in the sky in the rider with the bow, the first horseman, that's when the Chinese problem started around the world. And if you have been living here in the past two years or three years, you do understand the consequences that literally affected the whole world of uh, the Chinese problem. So this is something very big that happened here on the same day that the problem, the Chinese problem happened. So it seems like this rider was released starting there on the, the east and going towards the west. So it, it began on Asia in China and then expanded itself towards all the other countries around the world. So it was a major problem that happened throughout the world right after this conjunction. So the sun, the moon here and the stars were pointing that something major was happening here and the symbolism is perfect. Happen, happening right after the conjunction of the first living creature releasing here the first horseman. To confirm this even further we have the the Illuminati, those that control this world, also confirming this for us because if we go to YouTube here, we can see that on August 26, 2019, so right after the conjunction with Leo, let me just show it again here, on August here, 26, you will see here the conjunction has just passed or was just finished here on, on the constellation of Leo. Right after this, they released a commercial for a perfume uh, of the brand Lancome Paris. And they are literally portraying here on August 26, 2019. So the, this was probably uh, finished before the conjunction and they released after the conjunction. They were portraying here the white horse and the rider of the white horse here being released on earth as you can see here the white horse was coming into the scene coming into the city it seems like it, they cannot see the white horse here the rider of the high horse but it is there and they also point out the sun in this in this commercial here so the wider the rider of the white horse the sun here and the perfume here which is uh, what he has to conquer the nations so they will use this perfume or this attraction to conquer the nations as the ride, rider of the white horse do and the name of this perfume is called idol so it's literal an idol or the Illuminati idol or the uh, the idol from the Satanism the, the Luciferianism that's their idol which just started to show up on earth right after the beast the the first living animal first living creature surrounding the throne of God the lion the cherubim with the face of the lion releases the rider of the white horse and precisely a few months later this major conjunction here on Sagittarius symbolizing the first rider happens in conjunction with something that happens major on earth that changes the way we live up until now so a major confirmation here for us and also I have something even further to confirm this when this happened I was already already making videos on YouTube and thankfully I had this uh, calendars that I have been making since 2018 
and that's why I have uh, many, let's say, links to news that happened on that moment, July, June, May 2019, up to uh, starting on 2018, that led me to check what happened in August 2019, when this first living creature was supposed to release the rider of the white horse, the first seal, and look what I found here on the days 14 and 15 of August 2019. So this is something that I found interesting that happened on the 14th of August 2019. So place flame faces flaming sky to annihilate massive fires on Greek Iceland. I found it interesting because it's like we live on a Greek world right now. And the sky was like red, full of fire here. So this was a major thing. But something even more major than this is this. So on the website of Israel, they had this happening on August 2019. Exclusive. The burning of the Heifer takes place in preparation for the third temple. So on August 2019, the rabbis, the Jewish nation, they were burning the, uh, the Heifer here. It's not a red heifer, but it's a royal one, an albeit one, in preparation for the purification ceremony for the third temple. So they were trying to bring their Messiah, which is the Antichrist, which is the rider of the first horse, into the scene by doing this sacrifice, by doing this ceremony. And as you can see, they were right on time with the consolation of the conjunction on the Leo, and right after it, the rider actually comes into the scene. And as you can see, on December, this happened here. And as this happened throughout the world, they already put this other information here on their website on December, uh, February 2020, that proof that this problem is the cause that was prophesied in the Bible and how it relates to the end of days. So they said, and they were correct and confirmed this, that this problem that happened in China in December and went out to the whole world it relates to the end of days and even more they said this the problem is like this God destabilizes the world economy by the arrival of the Messiah says Rabbi so on February 2020 here as this was escalating quickly the Rabbi said that this is something that has to happen for the arrival of their messiah which is what the rider of the right horse the first horseman which will deceive the nations and has actually deceived the nations so basically this is happening here on the sky and on the earth perfectly aligned as we saw here on the sky this uh, had such an, an enormous impact in the world that I believe it could be counted as the first seal. I don't know if this is the actual first seal of the Revelation or it's a foreshadowing of something even worse that will happen after the church leaves. But we cannot deny that this actually happened in the skies and happened here on the earth as well. And as you can see here, the rider of the white horse, he gives a bait, so he causes the problem in order to what inject the solution that he wants that's how he deceives that's how he conquest conquest conquer the nations so he 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 come forth bringing this problem starting in china which i believe is the bow the instrument the bait and he because of this bait he used to deliver the arrow the pointing needle that he used with toxins in the in the in the end here to inject poison into people do you understand what i'm saying because i cannot be more specific than this or else i i am in a very risk of being censored by youtube however if you can understand what i'm saying he used the bowl the problem as a bait in order to release the arrow, the needle, the jab with the toxin 
into those who were deceived. And this also happened in the skies, my brothers and sisters. So, after one year of him being in this world, by the end of the next year, 2020, also on the 21st of December 2020, we see the effects of the arrow coming up. So, this also happened in a conjunction with Jupiter, Jupiter and Saturn. So let's go here to Stellarium once again. And I will show what happened here right one year after this situation. So one uh, prophetic year, 360 days after. We see here the sun is still in Sagittarius, the variety of the first horse, uh, of the white horse, the first horseman. And right on the 21st of December, we see here, as you can see here, behind the first beast, the first horseman. But right after the, uh, in front of the second beast here, both hybrid beasts, one from the earth and one from, one from the water, Capricornius, we see here that Jupiter and Saturn come together here perfectly in between them on the 21st day of December. A lot of news information, they they said that this conjunction might be the start of the start of Bethlehem. So as we were here in 2020, we saw this. It was a major thing in the skies. And some were saying that this was the start of Bethlehem. Of course, not for the uh, not for the church or not for Jesus, but for the Antichrist. Because that's what when something major also happened when in the world so they because of the problem they started to quickly assemble something to resolve the problem and as you can read here i'm not going to read it all but you said that this was they were trying to resolve the problem as soon as possible but the major thing that i want you to see is this this company this devil, devilish company that starts with P and ends with Iser started to do a new technology trying to uh, make something or give a message to your uh, to your body, to your inner parts of the, your body, so to your cells. They created this new technology or newish technology which they can provide a new message to your body in order to literally do an adultery of your body. They, they wanted to change how your body works, making giving this message to your body. And as you can see here, as you can read, as of 21st of December, precisely the date that this was happening, as of 21st of December, many countries in the European Union had already authorized or approved this P jab together with the United States and the Arabs as well. So most places in the world approved this message from this devilish company to give into people around the world and many were deceived, many were conquered conquered by this arrow that came out of the first seal the first horseman so he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror to bent on conquest when he shoot an arrow and people received his arrow with the toxin he was able to conquer the person from inside out from his their dna their their genetic code changing how it works or how it was supposed to work by the perfect creator who made it and signed his work that's how uh, this first writer was uh, came given a problem and then the solution to enter the people's body and change their genetic code in a way that they would be changed from inside out or they would be killed from inside out just like the Trojan horse. So this is something major that happened precisely just as you can see here on the sky and also on earth 
one year precisely after the problem. So this writer here actually conquered a whole lot of the portion of the world. So I believe more than 60% of the people in the world have received his arrow, has accepted his arrow and had no idea how awful this is. Until now, some are saying that this is the mark of the beast. I cannot confirm or deny it, but I cannot deny that this information and this correlation is too strong to pass out. So I hope, I really hope that you that are uh, watching this video haven't received any uh, arrow from this guy here that was released on Earth 2019. Because what he's able to do from the uh, inside of your body is something simply something uh, out of this world. He was able to conquer people with this. And it's a major sign happening in the sky and also happening on Earth again. So two times already happened in the sky and on Earth. So as you can see here, basically the rider of the white horse after he's released caused chaos on the Earth. Not as strong as we were expecting, but enough to make around 60 or 70 percent of the people in the world to receive his solution for his problem and it's enough to to see how major this was and how relevant or how actually possible this is for the first seal to have actually been opened even without the church leaving because the church was being tested I guess on this earth if they would receive or not this toxin him here from the first horseman. I honestly don't know how uh, how much worse this can get, or how much worse this this would get in the tribulation, in the seven years. Because if this is just a simple uh, observation or just a simple symbolism of what will happen, how much worse can this get? How much worse could a sign in the sky perfectly aligned to something that actually changed the whole world. I don't know, but I will leave for you guys to think about it and see if this is actually the first seal that was opened or if it's just a symbolism that will actually uh, play out far worse in the tribulation after the church leaves. I could see it either way, but let's continue here so you guys can see more of this. So now going back here, after the first horseman being released, the second horseman to be released is the horseman of war, symbolized here by the constellation of Scorpio or Eagle as we saw earlier. Now let's go here to the Bible again. And read together the second seal. So Revelation 6 verse 3. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I've heard a second living creature says, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people, people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. So... The second rider is a red rider, a red one, called War, and he was given power to take peace out of the earth. Remember this when we go to investigate what happened in the sky. So, in the constellation here of Scorpio or Eagle, something happened just one year after this conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in 2020. So it was given one year for people to accept or deny here the toxin from the first rider and then the second rider would come into place. Because on the 25th of December 2021, one year later, uh, it happened a planetary alignment right beginning in the constellation of Scorpio. So now let's go to Stellarium and see what happened there on the 25th of December 2021. 
So as you can see here, let me just change the hour so it, it's easier to see. And as you can see here, we have a major alignment in the sky with all of the planets. So Mars is here on the constellation of Scorpio. The Sun is here, Mercury is here, Venus is here, Saturn is here, Jupiter is here, and Neptune is here also. Uranus is some, somewhere around here as well, and Pluto. So in the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022, I remember I've been doing videos telling about this major planetary alignment happening in one side of the Earth. Perhaps you can watch my uh, uh, old videos and you will see a major alignment like this that I showed uh, when we were there. This major planetary alignment beginning here on Scorpio with Mars. So pay attention here to Mars because Mars is considered to be the one, the red planet. The red planet and Mars is the Roman god or pagan god of war. So let, let's go now, check some information about Mars. So Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. He is named after the Roman god of war. He is named after the Roman god of war. So he is red, he is visible, he is named after a god of war, just like the, the second horseman is called war. And also here, in Greek mythology, he also was known as the Greek god of war, and his name was to be Ares. So Mars from Roman, Roman gods, was Ares. Ares, the Greek god of war as well. So it is the god of war that being portrayed as Mars, or Mars is portraying the god of war. And it's something here very relevant for us because he is a red planet. He is called after uh, two gods of war, one pagan Roman and one pagan Greek, and they are here beginning this, this sign here in the sky, this planetary alignment in the constellation of Scorpio, which used to be the eagle. So the second horseman released by the eagle here is beginning with Mars on the constellation of Scorpio or the Eagle. And as you can see, Mars was called Ares. And the brightest star in the constellation of Scorpio is Anti-Ares, so, or Antares, which is basically Anti-Ares, that which uh, is against Ares or against Mars, Anti-Mars. Uh, it feels like this star is the, the star from God or the... the, the the living creature, creature that surrounds the throne of God, the cherubim, cherubim, which is releasing Ares. So anti-Ares is now releasing Ares here with this conjunction, this planetary alignment happening here, uh, beginning on Mars. And as you can see here, what will happen in the next uh, few days after this conjunction begins, you will see that Venus... Venus, which is symbolized by the Antichrist himself, or the rider of the white horse. And I will show you guys as well, because we will uh, check on Venus here now. So if we go here to Wikipedia and search about Venus, we see this. So, Venus appears in the sky either as a morning star or an evening star. After the moon is the brightest natural object, so it has a lot of light. Is the second largest terrestrial object here. And take a look here. In the Greek mythology, in the Greek mythology,
It is called after the goddess of love, Aphrodite, which we will look after. But take a look at what I found here in the English version of Wikipedia. Though they recognized Venus as a single object, the ancient Romans continued to designate the morning aspect of Venus as Lucifer. It is written here, Lucifer, literally the light bringer, as the evening aspect of Vesper, both of which are literal translation of the traditional Greek names. So they were calling literally here Lucifer, Venus as Lucifer, the light bringer. So what else can we say about this? This is clearly a portraying of uh, the enemy, the Satan himself. And the Bible also tells us about this, because if you research Morning Star, you will see here that on Isaiah 14, uh, God says this about the Venus or the Morning Star, uh, how you have fallen from heaven, Morning Star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low, low the nations. So God himself tells us that the Morning Star or Venus would be a symbolism of Lucifer or Satan who was cast down from heaven. I know that Jesus himself in Revelation calls himself the bright morning star, the new bright morning star, but the first bright morning star, which was supposed to be Lucifer and now it's Satan, he was cast out from heaven. So Venus is a, symbol a symbolism of Lucifer, of Satan, of the enemy of our souls. And the Bible says this, and also the mythology, the Wikipedia here, says this, and the goddess of love, Aphrodite, is also called the goddess Venus, so it's like a female version of the Satan, of Lucifer, because he's a love of God, lust, beauty, pleasure, and it's here with uh, in the Trojan War, interesting, Trojan War, I just said Trojan horse that was used to win the Trojan War, just like what happened here in the 2019-2020, right? So, as you can see here, Venus is clearly a symbolism of the enemy of our soul. So, you will see here in the next days after this conjunction begin, Venus as the first rider, the Antichrist, Satan himself, he goes back all the way until the shield, he grabs the shield, waits for Mars, the second horseman, to reach him, and then both together goes together to form another alignment here. So let's go toward, towards the days here, and you see here that Venus is going retrograde into the shield, as Mars is coming up after being released by anti-Mars or anti Ares. And as you can see here, Venus is coming back to grab the shield, the weapon of a war, in the sky. He goes to the shield, now he waits for Mars to reach him. He's waiting for Mars, and then when Mars reaches him... Let me just change the hour here so it's easily visible. Now when Mars reaches Venus, both come together to form a new alignment here in the 24th of February 2022. So on the 24th of February 2022, this alignment happened, all the planets are here on the beasts, both hyper beasts, and the sun is pointing the constellation of Aquarius, which would be the second here, the second uh, the second living creature surrounding the throne of God. And I remember clearly, and I believe you that is watching the signs and the seasons, also remember that on the 24th of February 2022, Jupiter was going through the water of Aquarius, and we understand that Jupiter is the, the male child that is born out of the Revelation 12 sign happening in 2017, when he's going through the water, it kind of means like the water broke. So the baby, the male child, is about to be born 
to born here in this earth. So we are all, all paying attention to this when Jupiter was going through the water, meaning the water broke, meaning the baby is about to be born. But we didn't pay attention to what happened right after here because both beasts here, the beasts out of the water and the beasts out of the earth, was being pointed here together. Now Venus and Mars are together, Venus being the first beast, the first rider, and Mars now with the shield that Venus grabbed him, has this, the weapon of war, and he is being released into the earth as well as the second horseman, the war horseman, the second seal being opened. And as you remember as well, on the 24th of February 2022, that's when Russia invaded Ukraine, and that's when peace uh, came out of the earth. So, as we read here, the rider was given power or the shield there from Venus to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. Precisely what happened on the 24th of February 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine, and from that point, from that moment on, we see a lot of wars and rumors of wars because peace was taken from the earth and now we are so close to a third world war that we have never been this close as we have right now because they are already talking about nuclear war they are already talking about nuclear exercises they are bringing out russia is bringing out the weapon the missile called satan 2 we see also North Korea and South Korea and Japan being on heavily escalating tensions there. Also, China is with tensions from Taiwan. So all over the world we have this major uh, rumors of wars that is about to be escalated as soon as one focus of war strikes another. And uh, on by today here. Uh, France, I believe, some, uh, somebody pointed this out, France is about to uh, close borders and prepare the state of war, just like Russia as well. So we are very, very close to a third world war, to a poss possibly nuclear war, because peace was taken from the earth precisely when, precisely when this alignment happened. Jupiter was about to be born, the male child was about to be born, and Mars has just received the power the weapon of uh, of war from the first rider Venus, which we saw there, and the the second rider was released here in this earth, and peace literally was taken out of this earth up until now. Until now, we see peace being out of this earth, and we are very very close to a dangerous world war here, which I believe the church will not see. I believe we will t be taken out before that moment. But, indubitably, this is happening in the skies and also happening in the earth. Just like uh, we see something happening upstairs and now we see something also in the same day happening in this physical world, in this reality which we live in. So this is something major, guys, major. It's already three confirmations in the sky and on the earth. So going back here to the presentation, we saw here this rider or the second rider being released by the second, the second here uh, living creature surrounding the throne of God, making this conjunction on the 24th of February 2022 when the water broke, when the peace was taken out of this earth. Because once the water from the women breaks, she begins the labor pains and then literally that's what we are perceiving here on earth labor pains that is about to get very very strong very soon because we are literally seeing the world uh, almost in a huge chaos so this is happening as we speak right now and this is something major that i haven't seen uh, many people talking about and the confirmations in the sky and on the earth is simply out of this world they are they are uh, correct up to the date the date they are happening they are correct but it doesn't stop there it doesn't stop there now let's go back here and read the next seal the next revelation seal this one is very very 
tense. We are about to reach the harder parts of the seals. So, verse 5. When the lamp opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, say Come. I looked, and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. So, the black horse was holding a pair of scales. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wage, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Brothers and sisters here, we have two major information here in which we can perceive what's happening in the sky out of this verse 5 and 6. First, we see the black horse, and he has a pair of scales in his hand. I believe you can clearly see that something will be happening in the scales. But before that, we see the living creatures, which releases the black horse, the third living creatures, saying this, two pounds of wheat for a day's wage, and we know wheat is a symbolism for the church, so it will be uh, scarce, or expensive, uh, very expensive, we do, the wheat will be very expensive, and also six pounds of barley for a day's wage. Also barley, which also could be related to the church, a barley harvest, is also very expensive in this earth. Do not damage the oil, the Holy Spirit, and the wine, which is the blood of Christ that pays for our sins, that pays for our iniquity. So, we see here the, the, the living creatures portraying here uh, the wheat is becoming scarce, also the barley, but the oil is still uh, available and the wine is still available. So, this here could point to a rapture because the wheat or the barley will leave this earth as uh, the church, the, the faithful church. So the faithful church will leave this earth and wheat and barley will become scarce, scarce. However, those that are unwise, the unwise virgins, they will still be able to buy oil in the fire, in the tribulation, which I believe this black horse will uh, start here clearly because uh, uh, famine is something major to happen in the earth. So the oil won't be changed, so they will still be able to uh, buy oil or receive oil if they are, remain faithful on the tribulation. And the wine or the blood of Christ will still be able to pay for their sins as long as they stay faithful to Christ and die for him if he, they had to. So, first, before going to the black horse, let's see here uh, a conjunction that happens related to what the animals are saying here, the, the living creature is saying, or the cherubim is saying. So going here to Stellarium, or better yet, let's go here to the presentation, and we, you will see that after the water broke, the next constellation that has something major happening is precisely the constellation of Virgo, Virgo, which here for me, I believe, it symbolizes the eagle as well. Why? Because in Revelation 12, the woman, the women, will receive the eagles at the wings of a great eagle, which will protect them for three and a half years. So the women being Israel, they will be protected for three and a half years into the tribulation, and they will receive uh, wings of a great eagle. And also the women, the woman here, is holding wheat or barley and we can see here this on the on the Stellarian app as well so what happens here is right today or for me already yesterday on the 18th of October 2022 for me it's yesterday for some of you it's still today so that's why I cannot postpone this information any longer we are among or just within this major conjunction happening in Spica, or on the star called also Abib, which is the brightest star on the constellation of Virgo, which is a star associated with 
barley or wheat the grain harvest so let's go here to Stellarium once again and you will see that today let's go to October and the date to the 18th we see here on the constellation of the Virgin of Virgo we see here Venus the Sun and Spica on a conjunction here on the constellation of the Virgo Virgo on the precisely on the wheat uh, sheaves on the sheaves of wheat or the sheaves of barley which is a uh, for us it's like a, a, a harvest sign for us because we are the wheat we could also be the barley and we are about to be harvest harvested all of this earth as the faithful church as the faithful wheat the faithful barley and this is also pointing out this moment of time right before the change in the Shemitah cycle right before the Sun reaches the scales the Libra right before uh, the cycle for the seven next years begins <coughs> So take a look how major this is. Do you guys, did you guys see that this is happening today or yesterday? This was happening here as we are, as we were watching a major sign here happening. And also Mercury, which is the messenger, is giving a message here as well. The message that the harvest is about to be taken. The message that it, the harvest here. Uh, is about to be taken out of this earth because Venus or Lucifer the, the Antichrist cannot perform all that he wants to do in this earth with the church is still in here just like 2 Thessalonians 2 says so for me right here in the end of the summer in Israel right here before the changing of for the seventh month the changing of the Shemitah cycle for me this is a major sign playing out in this constellation in which Jupiter the male child was to be born or was born out right after the water being broke on this year a couple months later this happens in this in this constellation the constellation of the Virgin which will receive the week at the wings of the great eagle to be uh, flown into security for three and a half years so Israel will be protected by the eagle by the third living creature that released or is about to release the third horseman and as we uh, spoke previously the third horseman is holding the scales so clearly the third horseman is holding the scales so the next conjunction the next major sign will be in the scales and I believe you already know when this is gonna be because we have been tech talking about this for a couple of videos uh, by now and from November 8th through November 11 so 8 11 and 11 11 there will be a blood moon in the constellation of Libra this blood moon is happening in the Feast of Tabernacles so the last feast of a tetrad 2021 2022 so a blood moon tetrad happening 2021 2022 in the last blood moon there will be also a conjunction in Libra in the scales so let's take a look here what is happening right after uh, this conjunction in Spica in Abib in the sheaves of wheat and barley so let's go here a couple days we see here that Venus is falling close the Sun Mercury the messenger God is coming close and on the 25th of October 2022 that's the last day of Elu. The last day of Elu, the last day of the previous Shemitah cycle. And precisely that day, that's when a partial solar eclipse visible from Jerusalem will be happening to mark the last day of the Shemitah cycle. This is marking the last day of the Shemitah cycle, the last day of Elu, Elu 29 or Elu 30. The next day after this is the first day of Tishrei, the first day of Tishrei, which is Hosh Hashanah or Feast of Trumpets. Trumpets, trumpets happening right after a partial solar eclipse here, the sun going to the scales, 
and then we see here that this is the first day, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, eleven, nine, and ten. On the tenth day of Tishrei, the tenth day of the seventh month, that's day of atonement or day of judgment. The day of judgment uh, it's happening when Venus and Mercury, so the Antichrist here, the Venus, the first rider, with the Sun and Mercury, the, the messenger god here, we will look at Mercury uh, soon here, but on the Day of Atonement, on the Day of the Judgment, Sun, Venus and Mercury doing a conjunction above the scales, above Libra, and then on Tabernacles, four more days, one, two, three, four, four more days, they enter the constellation of the scales, they enter Libra, and then we know that this is when the moon becomes blood red, precisely on the constellation of the Lamb. So, the moon is blood red on the constellation of the Lamb, and look here, before the moon is the planet Uranus. Uranus is a name for heaven. Let's see if I can if you can see here, if you can find this, Uranus. Uranus is heaven in Strong's Concordance. Strong's Concordance. Strong's. Take a look. Uranus is heaven. Guys, this is not a joke. What's happening in the sky and what's happening on Earth. So the, the last blood moon of the 2021-2022 Tetrad happening on Tabernacles, the ingathering, that's when you gather all of the harvest of the year. So basically the wheat, the barley, the fruits, all of the harvest is gathered in Tabernacles for the Tabernacles of God. And the blood moon is happening on the Lamb, so those who have the blood of the Lamb is being harvested. And besides Uranus, which means heaven. The visible heaven, the spiritual heaven. So this is out of my mind already. What's happening in the sky is so so major, so so big. I don't have words to describe how crazy and awesome this is uh, right now. So this is this is something major, guys. This is something out of this world. The, the confirmations and the the conjunctions and what's happening in the skies is so big, so big. It's if you tell this to somebody who is an unbeliever, they will plainly tell you that you are crazy. But this is so amazing. I'm like mind blow. I'm done. I'm done this video in Portuguese. I'm doing this in English, and I'm still mind blown by this. So Uranus is the planet which is heaven. So the blood moon, the last blood moon happening in the lamp on Tabernacles. A after the Feast of the Ingathering, together, besides Uranus, besides Heaven. And while this is happening, what's happening in the other side, those that were left behind, basically, they are about to be faced with the third horseman that is that was released here, or is being released here, with the scales on Libra. And I believe the horseman will be released here on 11-11, because... They are majorly here in the center of the constellation of Libra, of the scales. And 11 is a number of judgment. So 11, 11, judgment. 22 is 11 plus 11. I'll talk about this uh, later here in this video. But to confirm this even further, let's go check the planet Mercury. So the planet Mercury is also in here. And Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system, closer to the sun. And... It's named after a Roman god, Mercurius. So all of these planets, they are named after pagan gods, which is a abomination for God because he created this, and they are naming after pagan gods, demons. But take a look what God does. Mercury is the god of commerce. So precisely the effect of the third seal, the, the third uh, horseman, the black horse, is on the scales and it affects the economy and brings famine because wheat and barley is scarce scarce so this is out of this world even the planets 
even the position of the planets, even the position of the, the, the timing, everything is working perfectly uh, consecutively after the first seal, the second seal, and now the third seal after uh, so many confirmations here happening here in the air uh, on the skies and now we know we are on October 19 so this will be a future event a lot of people are already saying that the rapture may happen here I don't know it might be but I, I, I believe it's more connected to the third horseman being released and the blood moon being the rapture because the blood moon there besides Uranus it's simply amazing so we are looking that most likely on this day on Earth, 11-11, a major judgment will be happening on Earth if it follows the pattern of the first and the second seal. Just like on the first and second seal, they, uh, as soon as it happened on the sky, something major happened on the Earth. I believe that this will follow the pattern. And on 11-11, 2022, most likely something major will happen in the, the, in the case of famine. So maybe the full on all out war the full nuclear nuclear strike happens that brings chaos destruction and famine throughout the world so i believe something major will happen here but i do believe we won't be here to see it god forbids we see this because something really major will see it will happen but i believe we won't be able to see it because we will be together with god in the air being protected as a faithful son this is happening guys it's in the near future and we can see here that from this from this date that is that began today all the way onto the date of the blood moon and 11 11 i believe for us it is a major possibility for the rapture because not only the sky is showing us the constellations are showing us the position of the, the planets is showing us, also the Shemitah cycles and the feasts are showing us, but everything is aligned perfectly for a war to happen, or a major war that brings famine to happen. So we might be leaving here very, very soon, between today and 11-11, a conjunction there in the scales. I believe it because everything points to this, and it, it is following a pattern perfectly, as you can see here, it is following this pattern to the date, to the date. So we might see here the the rapture could already have been happening today, but I believe it will happen between today and the blood moon, the blood moon, and the conjunction. But most likely the blood moon because it's simply amazing the blood moon happening uh, before Uranus, which is heaven. Now, I do have something. To confirm this even further because if you remember on 2016 the magazine The Economist released this cover this cover here uh, predicting the world in 2017 so in the end of the year 2016 they predict the world in 2017 and as you can see here they have major many predictions here about uh, the, the world in 2017 the world uh, the moment when the Revelation 12 sign happened and they have tarot cards here portraying it the first one I want you to see that is a major and has is really related to the times we are right now is this one the tower as you can see here the tower uh, foreshadows here a division happening between the atheists, the communists, communists, those who are worshipping Satan and knowing or unknowingly the red flag against the Christian flag, the Christians, those who believe in Jesus, that follow the morals and the, val the values of Jesus and the Bible. So a major here uh, the vision happening in the world that's what they are predicting and precisely this division is happening today to the date as well because here in Brazil as I spoke in a previous video we are 
seeing the elections and the elections are precisely a, a Christian or somebody that defends the Christian values, the right wing here, against the left communist wing, uh, which is a guy that literally just came out of jail and is now, for some miracle reason, being able to uh, run or uh, run the elections here toward being for president of the nation. And he is clearly a using the red flag, the red uh, flag here, the communist flag, to try to destroy the Christian flag, the Christian values. So this is happening in Brazil here, precisely to the date. I believe this also happened earlier in the United States because Joe Biden on, is only present right now. You know why? Because this uh, major thing that will most likely happen in Brazil as well, this unlikely thing that even though the right wing has even, uh, way more followers, the left wing will still somehow win the elections. Uh, so the same thing that happened in the United States, I believe it will happen in Brazil. And it is a division like this. It is Jesus against Barabbas. So Jesus against Barabbas. You either choose or choose Jesus, the Messiah, which for us, our president has Messiah in his name. So his name is Jair Messiah Bolsonaro, the right wing candidate, the current president. And the, the second one is a thief. He is a robber. He was out of the jail. He is like Bar Barabbas. So this is the division that is happening right now in Brazil here. And I believe it's already happened or will happen also in the United States because there will be an election in the United States on the 8th of November together with the blood moon, uh, the, the last blood moon of the Tetrad. So the elections on the United States will also happen on the 8th of November around the same time here and I believe it will be the same situation the left against the right uh, the atheist against the believers this the unbelievers against the Christians the red flag against the blue flag this division is happening and as you can see here on this prediction it is uh, this division is being stopped by something coming out of the sky so a light coming out of the sky a uh, let's put it that way an interf interference from god himself that strikes this tower to destroy this tower to stop this uh, war or civil war this division to happen as you can see here in the, the picture but also something very interesting here is that they point this out here which is a clue to a church and something uh, nailed to the door of the church, which for us, this is clearly a symbolism for the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation that happened there in Europe in the 16th century. So on 1517, so 505 years from uh, today, before today, Martin Luther, he nailed on the church door the 95 Theses to protest against the Catholic uh, Church, which is the, the, the prostitute religion. The prostitute religion is a Catholic Church because they literally... Uh, have a lot of error and abuse and they are bringing together a lot of paganism into them and bringing a lot of people into their deception into deception so the catholic church the, the prostitute he, uh, this reformation happened and for us the 95 thesis that he presented he nailed to the church uh, door happened when Precisely on the 31st of October, uh, 1517. So, guys, in the end of October, and it says here that he nailed the thesis in, in other churches as well. 
on the 31st of October or in mid-November. So from 31st of October to mid-November, that's when it is considered to be the day that he nailed the thesis on the church's door. And that's uh, 31st of October is also considered Reformation Day, which is also Halloween or the Witch's Day. So it all is converging to the same date here. Because in Brazil, precisely, the second shift of the election will happen on the 30th of October. And then the election for the United States as well on the 8th of November, so mid-November. So this is so much coincidence and so much uh, uh, confirmation for us. Because even there on the, the Economist magazine, they are showing us that this is happening or this interference by God into this division is happening around here the time that the Reformation happened, the Reformation Day. I don't know how they would know this, but surely this is being portrayed here in a, a, a magazine in 2017. Something out of this world. Also, we, we know uh, we have many brothers uh, and sisters and kids who had dreams about the rapture happening around the time of Halloween. So it's also something major to be looking at. And another tarot card that I want you to check is the next one here, is Death, which is the fourth horseman, the last horseman. And as you can see here, Death is coming with a nuclear blast, I believe. Nuclear blast here. After famine, after scarcity here, the, the fish is dead here, symbolizing perhaps the, the church who is in earth is dead by this. And the these animals here that comes out of the bottomless pit also showing here in this card that they are predicting here. I know that our brother here, God's Roadmap to the End, he made an excellent video about this. Uh, portraying many things that I'm saying here as well. I'm just confirming it even further with the sign in the skies. And he did an excellent video here, amazing video. I, I encourage you all to watch God's Roadmap to the End. Not that you needed to, from me to see his channel. I believe his channel is bigger. But amazing confirmation that he has here with the dreams, vision, and all of this alignment that he does. And he also believes that we are one month off, which is amazing. I already thank him for portraying my video in his channel, which is amazing. So I love this interaction between the Watchman, the church, which is the body of Christ, looking at Christ and believing that we are about to uh, get raptured. And we are all together working with this. And I love his video. And he loved my video as well. And we are here together, believing the same thing. The rapture could happen anytime between now here and uh, November the 13th here ish let's put it that way so amazing video check it out it confirms my video as well and he is the one who gave me this information and I believe the next horseman here the horseman of the last horseman the horseman of death is the last one in the next one that will be uh, coming up after the conjunction in November, as we saw here, so after the conjunction of November, the next, the next here conjunction will happen in the next hybrid beast, Capricornus, the beast that comes out of the earth, the, out of the water. So the first one came out of the earth, the hybrid beast, and the last one will come out of the water, the hybrid beast of the water, Capricornus. So let's first read in Revelation. In Revelation here 6 what happened in the next seal so let's go here read Revelation 6 and the fourth seal 7 verse 7 when the lamp, lamp opened the fourth seal I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say come I looked and there before me was a pale horse its rider was named death and Hades or hell was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, famine and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. So the fourth seal 
the fourth horseman, it's kind of like a conjunction of all of the other uh, situations combined. So, sword from the war, the second horseman, famine from the third horseman, plague from the first horseman, they used the plague to uh, inject people with their conquest, with their toxin, and he adds here the wild beasts of the earth because most likely people would be fleeing to the wilderness because of persecution and that's why Bill, uh, the wild beasts will, will attack people as well because they will be in the wilderness fleeing the persecution so the fourth horseman is a major horseman after famine I believe in here literally the bomb will blow literally the nuclear blast will blow the, the situation will be very dark in this seal here definitely as we can read here one-fourth of the earth will be killed so out of 8 billion people which will achieve by middle, the middle of November we will reach 8 billion people in the world just Google it and you will see one-fourth is 2 billion people will die in this situation this seal when this seal is opened and you will see in Stellarium how close after the famine of after the third horseman this is so going back here to the presentation the next conjunction it's so close to the, the third horseman it is right after on the 23rd of January 2023 a conjunction happens in the constellation of Capricornus the hybrid beast so let's go to Celerian and see this happening here so here we are 11 11 the third horseman being released and now soon after let's go going through the days here we see the Venus and Mercury the first and the third horseman keeps together all the way into the middle all the way into the the between the, the both beasts here in the sky so they keep together here going a bit farther apart but they continue together until December we see here December and then on January they start to go apart because Venus will will find the fourth horseman the fourth the horseman of death which is right here at the end of the constellation of Capricornus which is Saturn so let's go here and we see here that on the 23rd 22nd 23rd ish uh, day of January that's when the Sun will be eat, being eat, eaten by the crap Capricornius the death so like death is entering the world and the Sun is will be uh, killed by one fourth so the light will be leaving this earth because death is coming up and Venus the first horseman and Saturn the fourth horseman is coming together here marking the beast that comes out of the water Capricornus so this is major that is happening right in January 2023 on the 23rd day right after the, the famine the third horseman this happens so quickly and we will look at Saturn so you can see here the other planet so the other planet is the sixth planet so 666 as well right second largest in the solar system let's go to what it matters here so it is called Saturn is named after Roman God another pagan God of wealth and agriculture and also gives the name for Saturn day so Saturn day it's Saturday it's Saturday comes from Saturn day this is, comes from a paganized Catholic Church that uh, came and brought this in side the church this paganism so Jupiter a huge planet here that it's awful I don't uh, I don't tell you to research too much because Saturn is an awful thing he has Saturnalia he has so many things that is very awful here about this this God here 
But let's go to his mythology here. It's a Roman god of generation, dissolution, abundance, and he equates to Kronos, the Greek god Kronos, which I believe there's something to do with also the Antichrist here. But take a look what it says about him. He was expelled from heaven by his son Jupiter. So Jupiter, which we know it is the male child from Revelation 12 sign, the male child will take uh, the place in heaven from Saturn. So Saturn will be expelled from the heavens by Jupiter, the male child. And he takes refuge in, on the earth in Latium, Lazio, which is a region in Italy where the city of Rome or the Catholic Church is built. So take a look how incredible this is. The story of Saturn is that he was expelled from heaven, the Jupiter, the, the male child, takes his place, he goes back to the earth and to Rome, and he exercises sovereignty uh, in Rome and brings a golden age. So, the golden age that the Illuminati, that those that control this world wants, this beast, this fourth beast, will be bringing up the golden age that they call the, the uh, golden age which will be brought by the Antichrist or the false messiah here or the false prophet, I don't know. But he is expelled from heaven and he brings a golden age. He was the one in the tradition. He is attributed to the origin of Rome. So Saturn uh, was the one that created Rome, created the Catholic Church here. And we will go back to Catholic Church here to what? Uh, to unite, unify the religions bring one religion out of the catholic church and they will and he will be sovereign in that religion he will unite the religions he will be bringing the world to a golden age and he is the horseman of death so how crazy this is but rome built a temple from him uh, and a lot of things happen here on rome i know serpent as his band here so he's the serpent he will be taking refuge in rome in italy Precisely when where Rome is, where the Vatican is, he will be taking refuge there after being expelled from heaven, uh, and he will unite the religions here, definitely bringing the golden age. So Saturn clearly the beast out of the earth, the last beast, which will bring death. One fourth of the 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 world will die because of him because he will bring this unified religion and whoever doesn't accept that religion accepted throughout the world will be persecuted and have to flee to the wilderness otherwise they will be killed as well by the sword so basically all of the planets all of the constellations all of the conjunctions is clearly showing us the same situation of the revelation the same situation that we have been seeing here and it is very clear, it's clear as crystal, and the sea of crystal that we see here once we get into the throne of heaven. It is clear as crystal, something is definitely happening in the skies, and to the date it's happening on the earth. The next one is the rapture, I believe, happening anytime between now and November, and in November I believe famine will come, and soon after death will come to bring this major religion here uh, to the world and i believe that this guy this fourth horseman will be released uh, by the fourth living creature which is the ox faced angel and the conjunction in the ox will be happening one year after that on 2024 just for the sakes for you to understand and see this i will go to stellarian and on 2023 nothing major happening in the sky there won't be many eclipses or uh, blood moons, but in 2024, in June, we see the conjunction happening here in the bull. Also in here, I, I can see here, also after in Gemini, but in the bull here, we see on the horns of the bull, of the ox, this conjunction happens with Venus and Mercury and the Sun here. And also Jupiter in the bull, which I believe is the fourth living creature, releasing their death, or major death, 
in 2024, approaching there, the middle point of the tribulation, I believe. So, these are in the future, we cannot uh, predict per precisely what will happen, but if it follows the pattern, as we have been seeing here, for one, for one, two, three, four, five constellations, it will follow this pattern. If it follows the pattern, then something major will also happen in 2024, related to death, related to the fourth horseman as well. So as you can see here, I counted the days between the four horsemen here being released. The first, from the first to the second one, it took two years and two months, or 26 months. From the second to the third, it took only nine months, from the second horseman to the third horseman. And from the third horseman to the fourth horseman, it will take only two months, as if the days are being shortened and they are going quicker, quicker and quicker. So, this is happening as we speak right now. We are in the season for the harvest, the last harvest of the year, the harvest of the church, the harvest of the wheat and the barley, the, the sheaves that the, the Virgo is holding. Before the constellation of Libra points out the third horseman, the horseman of famine coming up in the world. And as we can see that the tensions rising up and rising up, I really believe we are very soon uh, uh, to find out or to see that actually the the big war as we are expecting and the famine after the war will happen anytime between now and the 11th 11 sign in the sky this is clearly for us that it's happening uh, it's already one hour and 38 about 40 minutes of live stream guys i have no idea how my voice is still working after another two almost two hours of live stream but i believe i believe god is using my myself to show you guys what's happening here and as you can see here we are very very close to the rapture very very close to the moment we have been expecting and waiting for the past seven years some people even more years than than we have been but now we are going we are seeing a conjunction of the stars, the planetary alignments, everything in the sky and on the earth conjunct, uh, converge to this moment for the, the rapture to happen. And it's already almost two hours, but I haven't uh, finished this yet because I, I even have more information to show you guys. And I will quickly go through here because I believe I already shown you enough for you to believe we are very, very close to the rapture. But let's go here to some dreams here. I, I spoke about these dreams uh, on my previous video, so I won't stay along for here. Basically, on the 28th of September, I had a dream in which I saw a red horizon that sounded like a war, a major war broke out. People were going to, to, to the markets to buy food, to stock on food, because they believed that it either has begun or was about to begin a war, a major war. And that's what I believe we will be seeing soon due to all of the, the tensions rising up in the world. And that's when people started going to their refugees. Somebody called me in my dream to go to this refugee. And I found uh, I was in a group of people and together... We were walking towards this destination that was to be a refugee, but an angel-like person appeared to me in white clothes uh, within those people that were walking with me and said to me, uh, precisely saying my name, Ricardo, our refugee is not in here. The time has come, uh, let's go. And this angel, this person disappears in front of me and I understood that it was the rapture. I spoke with the people that were walking with me because many people were being left behind there. I spoke about the refugee and I left my phone open for them. And as soon as I look up, my body started to feel light. I started to feel a heat and a, a strong a white light take uh, control of me and then I disappear. And I disappear and then I see myself again walking in a different way, in a beautiful path with many beautiful... Uh, uh, things around me like plants in the sky and then my wife calls me out I realize that she is there with me 
I still don't realize where I am at that moment in my dream. Uh, but a group of people approached me. I didn't know who they were, but I recognized one face there. It is Aaron from God a Minute in my dream. He was there, and I saw that I recognized him. He hugged me, and I realized that we were in heaven uh, at that moment, that it finally happened, the rapture. So that was my dream in the 28th of September. And then a brother in the in this channel here sent me an email telling that he has uh, he had also had a major rapture dream about uh, on the 28th of September as well together with mine and he also wrote on a notepad just like me he sent me and his dream basically said that he was in a talk show with Christ they asked Christ when was the rapture happening and the Lord got a piece of paper like a poster board and in this piece of paper he had the, uh, he had a smile on his face he had a picture holding a menorah the candle from the Jews the seven candle the menorah and then on the left hand side his right hand side a red word was written manjetsu he had this dream on the 28th of September as well he sent me he went to check if this word is a it's a real word here manjetsu and he discovered that it is a Japanese word which means full moon so the word in red in the menorah calling in Japanese he doesn't speak Japanese clearly and it is a red full moon which Jesus answered everybody on the talk show there in his dream so red moon clearly tabernacles for us precisely the moment we were expecting and also the following day after my dream and his dream on the 29th day my wife also had a dream about the rapture she also saw the red sky and then she also saw the sky shaking and trembling and that's when Jesus came out of the, in the clouds and brought forth his his hands to pick up the church the bride so that's his that's her dream on the following day after my dream and this uh, brother's dream so three confirmations for us in the 28th and 29th day here of uh, of September May, basically pointing us that the rapture is very soon to happen because we don't uh, usually have uh, rapture dreams it is rare but happening here one uh, after the other with the brother in the United States we are in Brazil here so three confirmations around the world for us that the rapture is happening uh, is very soon I have this October 2022 events happening here with links to the to the news I won't be telling about the news here because it will be very long but basically you see that the uh, catastrophe is about to happen a lot of uh, rising tensions about the third world war it's happening around us and they are escalating this even further because things has to happen but on the 25th day remembering it is a, a partial solar eclipse on the last day of a loo right before the changing in the Shemitah cycle right before the Feast of Trumpets so it's a major moment for us as well I put it up that from the 20 to the 18 which is today all the way until the 11 11 it is a major day for us to be expecting the rapture so stay put have oil in your lamps because we are very soon to have to leave I believe anytime between now and the 11th 11 sign in the sky and to finish this up I put this a menorah lamp here which is the, the candlestick from the juice or from the Bible and I crum crunched some numbers here to understand why would the rapture happen in tabernacles and then I understood that the first resurrection happened on Passover it was it happened on the 17th day of the first month or the month of Nisan as we call the 17th day of the first month the first resurrection, resurrection happened with Jesus resurrection so on Passover he resurrected the Old Testament Saints it is very likely that the second resurrection of the resurrection of the church of grace happens on tabernacles which is the 17th day of the seventh month which is tabernacles third day of tabernacles and it is the last feast of the seven major feasts here which is very uh, interesting for us as well because uh, it's, it's a, it is like they are pointing towards the middle point here so and the first month was used, used to be the seventh month 
and the seventh month used to be the first month. So Nisan was to be the seventh month, and Tishri was to be the first month, and it is interchangeable. Uh, Moses, God changed that with Moses, calling Nisan the first and Tishri the seventh. That's why Rosh Hashanah, or the, the head of the year, is still being considered on Tishri because it, it, it is the counting since the, the creation of the world. So it could be that the the second resurrection, the, the, resurrection, the resurrection of the grace of the church happens on the 17th day of the seventh month, which is Tabernacles, the third day of Tabernacles. For us, this date will be following exactly on 11-11-2022. So the 11th of November 11th, 2022, that's when it is the 17th day of the seventh month, precisely for us. And as you can see, 11, uh, it is 11-11 and 22 is 11 plus 11, which is four times the 11th number, which is judgment. 11 means judgment. And also 11th is the 11th Shemitah cycle since Israel was... Israel's rebirth. So since they became a nation, this Shemitah cycle is starting on the 1st of Tishrei, on the 26th of October. This will be the first feasts on the 11th, 11th Shemitah cycle here. So this is a major also happening for us. And to complete this even further and close with a golden key, on the 13th of November 2022, all of the world religions will unite on Mount Sinai asking God for directions for a new Ten Commandments. So this is something that I have to uh, show you guys because it's unbelievable the amount of things we are happening here. So we see that on November 2022, from 6th of November all the way until 18th of November, uh, the COP27 will be happening, which is, which is the climate conference conference from the united nations so the climate conference from the united nations will be uh, a bro uh, uh, covering the feast of tabernacles in its full also the blood moon on the 8th of november and i believe and i have been spoken this speaking this in previous videos that the antichrist will be here because this is the perfect moment for him to come and bring his uh, his new religion here the world religion to deceive the nations and now i see that actually the world religions as they were making videos to to the elijah interfaith institute here they made videos on youtube uh, bringing to make friends to unite here all of the religions they are making uh, this thing here which is returning to Sinai, a prophetic call for climate justice and ceremony repentance. Sunday, November 13, 2022, on Mount Sinai, in parallel with the COP27 UN Climate Conference. So what do they want with this? Basically, they want uh, religious leaders will re return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. It decides for turning to God and receiving God's message. So they are expecting to receive a God's message there in Mount Sinai on the 13th of November, right on Feast of Tabernacles, to have a climate justice, the 10 universal commandments. So they want 10 universal or worldly commandments to receive from God on Mount Sinai. So this is a perfect moment for the Antichrist to come up for the... For Satan to be cast out of the heaven and deceive the nations, deceive the religions there on Mount Sinai and bring his Ten Commandments, his new Ten Commandments, the climate commandments, to what? To deceive the nations and then to enforce his unified religion in the world. This is a perfect place for the great deception that will come, just like on 2 Thessalonians 2. So a perfect moment for a great deception happening here with the religions of the world that they, they will do this precisely on this moment of time they are the elijah institute of interfaith institute together with the with the interfaith center for sustainable development and the peace department on the united states the peace department uh, when they say peace and security then sudden destruction comes to them and the sudden destruction will come as they miss the rapture and receive famine the third horseman or death even the fourth horseman, I don't know, but as we have seen there on the 
constellations is most, more likely famine will appear with the Antichrist to deceive the nations, the sudden, sudden destruction after church the church leaves. So here, returning to Mount Sinai, a prophetic call for climate justice and ceremony of repentance. So they are calling God on Mount Sinai to receive this new Ten Commandments of the Earth, the climate justice for universal thing for them. Very interesting because, again, they are doing this precisely when? Precisely, I'm going to have shown you guys this graph here. They are doing this on the Feast of Tabernacles, which is precisely the moment when Moses came down a second time from Mount Sinai with the new Ten Commandments and with his face glowing. So it's a perfect time for the Antichrist, for the beast, to deceive them with his face glowing as well with the new Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, prophetically Mount Sinai, on the Feast of Tabernacles as they ex expecting. But the Jews and most of the church, they will believe they are on the eighth month, the month when the flood starts. So this is very interesting as well because it will be tabernacles. They will be precisely on that moment when Moses came down the mountain with the commandments. But for them, they will believe they are in the moment when the flood comes. So very interesting how things are working out uh, in this moment of time with the church, with the earth, with the clock in the sky, with everything as we have been seeing here. So guys, two hours of live stream already. This is uh, too much information to digest, but it's just simply uh, too much. It's simply enough. I believe uh, we cannot add anything more to this. We simply now have to wait and see what happens. But it's too much evidence to not uh, for it not to be anything. I believe very soon, very shortly, we will be leaving this earth as a whole body of Christ, as the as the faithful servants, as the faithful church, and we will be talking about this in heaven very, very soon with the Lamb, with our brothers and sisters who are also watching, and we will have been seeing what uh, actually happens on the earth, because all of this is pointing towards the same moment of time, and it's something amazing, a convergence out of this world, and something like this will never happen again, in such a large convergence, coincidence, and anything you can you can say here. It's, it's out of this world, it's something amazing and I really hope that all of you that watch this video here are ready to meet your maker in the sky are ready to be with the lamb in his uh, wedding being the bride of Christ and I hope you have oil and be ready to be delivered from this earth delivered from the horsemen of the apocalypse the horsemen of relation that are already causing chaos on this earth if they are already here or if they are not a symbolism of something worse, but if they are already here, I hope that you are ready to live before famine and before death, which will come very, very shortly in this scenario. So, God bless each and every one of you who have been staying with me here for two hours, listening to me speak here, but I believe uh, this has blessed you plenty, and I believe we will be meeting each other very shortly in the sky very very soon. Maranatha, my brothers and sisters, I hope to see all of you very very shortly very soon in the sky uh, anytime between now and the 11-11 sign in the sky. Maranatha